All right, getting up on the roof here at Tom's house at 1070 Indian Oaks Drive in Pine Creek. Tom asked me to come out and look at the roof and give him hopefully an estimate for a repair based on a home inspection report and a wind mitigation report he had recently done. And they found damage or broken shingles up in the roof. So he wasn't sure whether it needed a full re-roof or whether it could be repaired. It didn't take long um, when I put my ladder up and I started making notes uh, exactly what's going on. So even from the ladder, I found the very first thing I touched is this whole section of shingle that's lifted up. See how it's lost its connectivity with the rest of the roof itself. Once you lose that bond between the back of the shingle, it's not gonna sit back down. It's just gonna keep flopping, vibrating around in the wind until it eventually breaks off. And there's plenty more that I'm gonna show you that's already done just that. And then we have some marks around the roof. I'll talk more about those. Here's a whole nother section right here. Look at that. You can see the rusty nails. You can see the debris underneath. Yeah, this one too. Okay. Well, I made a little example here about just even this little area alone. And so just to replace these one, two, three, four, five shingles, because of the, the age of the roof being 15 years old, you can't just lift up and, and replace a shingle and not expect to break 15 year old shingles that are adjacent to it. And so the only way to do a proper repair is to think of this as a, a trapezoid. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about as far as this section. So from ridge cap to ridge cap, this whole section would, would be replaced. replaced. That, is, that is the only appropriate version of a repair for this roof. And then when you come over here, we have more, actually more progressed damage. So this shingle is completely missing. Here's those uh, crease marks that's going to happen there right so all this has happened before more broken shingles so we can't just you know slip a new shingle in now this section needs to be replaced oh we have more lift up here look at this these guys are just poor guys are just literally hanging on by a thread and that's where it's starting right there so in order to repair this section you got to go to the edges well that's clean that's clean and then we got to go that way and now we got to go this way now you, now it's connected to this so i don't think we can even you know stop right here we'd have to do this area so as you can see it's that that concept is starting to snowball rapidly out of control as far as the repair goes if we did talk about a re-roof because we're walking right here the first thing i would mention is we're going to get rid of these off ridge vents these things are like four foot open windows right into your attic. So we always, always get rid of these and we install the low profile top ridge vent. Uh, we replace, restore the wood that would go here and then we use the top ridge vent. We'd use it here, we use it there. We'll talk more about that too. So here's more of the, the beginnings of lifted up shingles. This obviously denotes big sections. Look at that. Oh, when I was walking here, there was a very suspect, soft piece of plywood right here, okay, that we'll replace. Then I started seeing all these, what look like hail impact marks, and I'll talk more about those as well too. They're pretty much scattered throughout in a very consistent manner. Granted, they're old. You can see literally the, 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 the matting and the fiber material, it looks like uh, frayed denim. It's actually fiberglass that you see and that's become very consistent on all all the sides of the roof oh here's my reminder look so as far as the finished product goes we've done those two houses and so that's the certainty landmark hunter green shingle and then that house we did not do can you see the aesthetic difference between the the aesthetic smoothness of these two uh, houses compared to the roof on that house maybe you like it more contrasty more blotchy but I, I like the more aesthetic smoothness of of what we do versus the competitor sorry and then we have more of these same what appear to be hail impact marks consistent in its pattern okay and then back out front more of the same. Boom. So the hailstorm March 27th of 2019 did come from the north. So it, this is consistent with um, with that premise as well too. 
all these marks. Okay, so that's the story about the roof. I don't think it's a good candidate for a repair, certainly for a re-roof. Um, last 20 seconds, allow me to talk about how we, Florida Native, are gonna do your roof correctly. Forgive me, uh, you, maybe you've heard this already. Um, but it's really not the top layer of shingles that's so vitally important. It's all the layers underneath. So imagine this with me if you would. We're going to remove all the shingles, get down to the bare plywood. We're going to inspect every inch of this bare plywood. Anything remotely bad like that area, usually where the, the water cascades off of one roof down into another roof, there's always some bad plywood there. Um, you get the equivalent about the size of a, a garage door of replacement with your new roof and no extra charge. The two building codes that are so important um, with your upgraded roof. The first one says re-nail the plywood to the roof trusses every six inches. We go every four to five inches, so we're gonna double triple the number of nails holding your plywood to your roof trusses. And then what I think is the, the best one is the waterproof barrier. We're gonna cover every inch of this bare plywood roof with this rubberized, super sticky um, waterproof barrier. So even in the event that, let's just say the neighbor's screen Lanai ends up on top of your brand new roof in the in the next hurricane, it's still not gonna allow water inside the house with that waterproof barrier. And then we're gonna put your favorite color, Certainty Landmark Series shingles and Hunter Green on top of that. Okay, so that's basically just the, the whole overview. I'm gonna get down and talk more with Tom. Thanks.